Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to the lecture entitled Pesticide Formulations. This information comes directly from Chapter 5 in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual. Now, what I'm going to do is briefly talk about the most important, uh, well they're all important, but the, the most commonly used formulations that we will see in the horticulture industry. Now, your textbook is going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages. I'm not going to read each one of those for you guys. That is something that you need to study on your own. So what I want you to do, if you haven't already done it, is read Chapter 5, Pesticide Formulations, highlight the book, and then watch this lecture, and then get a different color highlighter and kind of highlight the things that, that I talk about uh, in the lecture. Uh, we'll try to keep this one short and sweet for you, but this is chapter five, and let's go ahead and get started with our objectives. We're gonna know the meaning of what a formulation is. We're gonna be familiar with these most commonly used abbreviations, WP for wettable powder, DF for dry flowable, EC for emulsifiable concentrate, and you may also see that is the, just the letter E, RTU for ready to use, and then you have S for solutions, then you have G for granules, and then you have ULV for ultra low volume. We're gonna look at the advantages and disadvantages of the common formulation types. Now again, I'm not going to read those word for word from your textbook. Those are something that I would just kind of read and highlight uh, as you're going through your book. Understand what buffers, stickers, and spreaders are and then select the correct amount of pesticide and additives that you may need for your application. And then determine if two or more pesticides can be mixed uh, in a tank. And guys, you kind of know my philosophy on that if you've watched the previous lectures. I'm all about covering it twice. I would rather do that. We see it so many times. For one, it hurts my pocketbook. I don't want to spend the extra money uh, by doing a dual application. I'm going to put out most of my fertilized granulars. I'm gonna push the spreader and I'm gonna calibrate it and I'm gonna do it correctly. And I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna put the, 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 dry, uh, the dry granules out on the yard. Then I'm gonna go back and spot spray uh, for my broadleaf weeds. Now, the only times you might wanna mix pesticides in a tank is if you're, you can do a liquid uh, fertility app and then you can mix your pre-emergent crabgrass control. And that's probably the only time that I would ever do that um, personally and professionally. So, but we've all, we've all got our uh, unique ways of how we want to, to run our business. And so we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk strictly about pesticide formulation. Here is a chart that comes directly from the National Corps Pesticide Applicators Manual. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed that and stuck it in here. But in your book on page 70, um, they're listing uh, the most common uh, formulations that we're going to see uh, in our industry. And that's table 5.1. And we're going to see aerosols, bait, concentrates, dust, uh, emulsifiable concentrates, flowables or liquids, and then we're going to see the granules, uh, we're going to see the gels, uh, microencapsulated pellets, ready to use solution, soluble granule, ultra low volume, uh, wettable powder, water dispersible granules, and then water soluble powder or packet. And guys, I'm going to be uh, uh, honest with you, the most uh, that I've probably used, uh, I have put out dusts, I've used aerosol cans uh, for broadleaf weed control would keep one on the mower. And so if I'm dry, driving on the mower along a shrub bed and I see uh, some weeds kind of growing up there, get out the aerosol can, hit it real quick. It was a lot quicker and simpler to do that. Uh, emulsifiable concentrates, we've probably all used that or, or know somebody that has because Roundup uh, is an EC. Used flowables, definitely used the granules. Um, used micro encapsulated, used pellets, ready to use, yes solutions, and then wettable powders I've used. The other ones, uh, possibly, but I can't remember, but those are the most common ones that I've personally used. And so let's go ahead and jump into these formulations. We have a liquid, and then we're talking about EC. We're talking about the E. We're talking about emulsifiable concentrates. They contain a liquid active ingredient, also an emulsifier or one or more petroleum-based solvents. And we turn in our textbook, and I already know this, but if we turn to page 79, we're going to see um, what an emulsifier is. 
that allows petroleum-based pesticides to mix with water. So it contains the emulsifier, the emulsifiable concentrate, and it allows that formulation to be mixed with that water to form an emulsion. And again, Roundup is a emulsifiable concentrate because when you buy Roundup in the bottle, it looks like that, almost some diluted tea. Don't think that we can drink it, guys. But uh, you mix it with water, and it's going to turn that milky white um, color there. And so pay attention to the advantages and disadvantages on page 71 in your textbook uh, about that. We have solutions, an active ingredient that will readily dissolve in a liquid carrier, water or petroleum base. And it is a true solution. It does not re require agitation before each use. So you could probably mix the tank and be okay the rest of the day. And guys, that saves time, that saves gas because you're not running the motor on the, uh, the sprayer. And you could probably put it in a backpack easily and it stays mixed up good enough. You're not having to constantly agitate or remix uh, your formulation. So it's a, it's a good product. Ready to use uh, or RTUs uh, uses a low concentrate solution. And when you hear that, you're probably already thinking and seeing, seeing that spray bottle in a Windex bottle, we're thinking homeowner, we're thinking big box store. And yes, that's, that's uh, uh, a good product. Uh, we've used it, yes, uh, occasionally, again, spot treatments. Uh, but these formulations are ready to use. There's no need to mix or dilute prior to the use. And I mean, I've even seen Roundup in ready to use uh, formulations like that. You can buy it already mixed uh, with, with water and you can spray it and put it out. Made from a small amount of the active ingredient and it is dissolved in an organic solvent. We have our ULVs or ultra low volume. It is close to 100% active ingredient, guys. So, you know, it has um, a very small amount of carrier in it. And it's, you're never going to put more, more than um, half a gallon per acre on it. And it's primarily used for agriculture. So, you know, yeah, there's probably some nurserymen or, or greenhouse operators that's probably used it. I mean, it is an insecticide, but we're, we're not really uh, dealing with that. If I'm putting out an insecticide, I'm probably going to put out a granular uh, I'm going to put out a dry application versus liquid for the insects. And possibly, um, possibly I, I could see some structural uh, pesticide applicators using it. Well, flowables or liquids. Uh, if active ingredient cannot dissolve in water or oil, it can be finely ground and then mixed with the liquid to form a suspension. And so, that's eh, a pretty cool idea when we think about it. And it is mixed with water prior to the application. There you have the product and then it's mixed or diluted uh, with the water. So uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff there. Aerosols, uh, again, the hairspray can, guys, or the paint can. Uh, they're among the easiest forms of pest control methods that you can use. Uh, it has one or more active ingredient and a solvent. It is ready to use in the self-contained units, like the hairspray can. And then uh, you can use a smoke or fog if not under uh, pressure. Um, like I said, we've used it for broadleaf weed control. We'd keep one on the mower, driving alongside a shrub bed, come to it, uh, see some weeds, pop it off, hit it, um, and even used it on a site inspection, you know, going behind our crews a day later, seeing how they've done it a couple days later, you know, spot spraying here and there. It's a lot easier than pulling that hose off the truck if you've only got uh, a few weeds. So you can keep a couple cans in the truck, easy, or, or the backpack, but this makes it a lot easier. Uh, to get out and hit that one little troublesome weed that popped up. Dust. Most are ready to use and only have a small percentage of the active ingredient. However, guys, this can be, even though it's a small percentage of active ingredient, you can still breathe that stuff in. And the wind can pick this dust up and take it off site. So it can, uh, it can be uh, kind of dangerous uh, when it comes to that. And used a lot probably in more of your structural um, pesticide applications. And uh, hmm, trying to think, they're used to control lice. Um, so again, yeah, an insecticide. Um, but the bad thing is, guys, is breathing that stuff in. It can be very, very dangerous. Um, and it's hard to, to get an even coverage of the pesticide 
uh, over over the surface. So that that can be a uh, troublesome issue for you. Paste, gels, liquids, or other injectable baits primarily used for cockroaches. And if you've seen the prior lectures in this uh, unit one, you're um, kind of freaked out when you see a cockroach now because that means one thing, they've got brothers and sisters hiding in the wall. They don't like hanging out with each other and they definitely don't like crawling across a cooler tile floor in the middle of the day. They like it. Uh, they like places that are damp. They like places that are dark. Uh, so running across that kitchen floor only means one thing. You've got more in them walls and kitchen cabinets than uh, you probably want to know about. Granules or granulars. I'd rather say granular instead of granules. Uh, but similar to dust, but these particles are heavier and larger uh, with the active ingredient. There is a coating um, that uh, is on the, uh, the granular there. Um, very similar to the pellets that we put out, um, and people use those terms interchangeably, but the difference is that the pellets are uniform in shape and weight. So let's think about this, an easy way to remember this, guys. Um, you have a pellet that you want to put out. Well, it's going to be uniform, and so you're trying to identify it or whatever. Uh, it depends on which class you're in. You may have to identify it, you know, looking at it, hey, is this a pellet or is it a granule? But pellets for pills very uniform. When you take a medication, all the pills look the same, right? They come out of the same bottle. Well, granules or granulars, um, let's think of gravel. Let's think of rocks. You know, they're not uniform. They're inconsistent in their weight, but there's several thousands of gravel in a small driveway, but they're all, none of them look the same. If it's pellets, they're going to look the same. So it's the easy way to remember it. P for pills and pellets and G for granulars and gravel. SP or uh, WSP, which are your soluble powders. They look like wettable powders, but the soluble powders uh, will readily dissolve in a solution and do not need to be agitated, which makes a good thing, which is a good thing. It's kind of hard to believe that, but they, uh, they dissolve in that solution and they do not need to be agitated. So um, very good for the lawn care industry. WDG or DG, water dispersible uh, granules, uh, commonly called dry flowables. Granulars are mixed with water and they break apart to form uh, a formulation similar to a wettable powder, which requires constant agitation. So you're gonna be mixing it, you're gonna pull up uh, to the stoplight beside a lawn care truck and you're going to hear that sprayer running in the back and what they're doing is they're agitating because uh, these formulations need to be constantly mixed. Almost looks like dipping dots there. Scary uh, situation there when you have that stuff around children. So please tell me that you do not keep your pesticides uh, stored near animals or children. Your micro encapsulated materials. Uh, liquid or dry pesticides that are covered in a plastic microcapsule, which is mixed with water and sprayed. After spraying, the plastic coating breaks down and it releases the active ingredient. So uh, some cool stuff there. And they're also doing micro encapsulated fertilizers uh, and even lime. Fumigants, formulations that produce poisonous gases. Some are liquid that create gas when released and others are solids that will create gas under high humidity. Probably not going to use this maybe in the greenhouse setting. You know, you've got to have that controlled environment uh, and your structural pesticide guys are gonna do it probably for a uh, uh, flea uh, application that gets in the house. Adjuvants is a chemical that does not perform pesticidal activity. Basically, they are an enhancer. They can be premixed in the formulation or added to increase the effectiveness or safety of the pesticide. Now, we've added adjuvants time to, you know, from time to time, um, but if you look on page 79, that's where they're talking about. There are chemicals that do not possess uh, any pesticidal activity. Remember, it is a chemical. Um, they're gonna help reduce surface tension, which improves the spreading uh, they're going to help solubilize uh, the material. They're going to improve the retention or wetting. They're going to help the pesticide get to the target. They're going to improve penetration and uptake. And then last but not least, improve the water quality. So these are things that you're going to purchase and add to your mix uh, for the, your applications. A surfactant. 
The surfactant is under table 515 as well. You have spreaders and wetting agents, um, which gives a uniform coat. You have the sticker, and I've always heard the term uh, spreader sticker. You know, I remember hearing the old guys, you know, hanging out with my dad when I was a young kid. Boy, you get you some of that spreader sticker to put in there, it'll help out. Um, but the sticker is going to keep it on the surface. And then you have a um, penetrant that will actually help get it through the surface. And then I put, of course, a picture of a spreader sticker uh, that is on there. A foaming agent is going to decrease drift. So if you have uh, a situation where you need to reduce that uh, automatically, and hopefully you're not spraying while it's windy, but uh, if you've got a crop that is very susceptible to the pesticide that you've got, you want to de decrease that drift at all cost, and you will add a foaming agent. And then an emulsifier allows the mixing of water with petroleum-based pesticides. And the emulsifier is also under table 515, uh, allows pe petroleum-based pesticide to mix with water, basically. And um, again, Roundup is an emulsifiable concentrate. Your pesticide mixtures. This involves mixing two or more pesticides uh, in a tank to save time and labor on an application. Pesticides can only be mixed if the effectiveness is not effective. You're not going to one cancel the other out, and there are pesticides that will do that. The characteristics are not changed if you mix them together. You can still use it if that doesn't happen. And if the damage is not uh, caused to the application site by mixing two or more of these pesticides. And again, guys, I like keeping things separate. The only time I would probably do it if I was going to put out a pre-emergent uh, fertilize um, where I would mix a liquid fertilized application and then add in the pre-em to it. That would probably be the only time that I would mix it. I would never mix in the summertime. I would push my fertilize out with a spreader and then go back and do spot spraying for broadleaf weed control. That hurts the pocketbook. And you have studies that say it's cheaper to mix the chemicals together than to have uh, your technician go over the site twice. But doing residential lawn care, guys, I don't see why it's... Uh, uh, why that's such a big deal. I mean, the, the yards are not that big anyway, so why mix the, the pesticides? And for one, you're not being a steward of the land. You're applying a pesticide uh, in an area that doesn't need it if you're putting out a broadleaf weed control that is mixed with a liquid fertilizer. Just don't do it. That is my opinion on it, and I will stick by it. Um, do a compatibility test on the pesticides. Read the label. Uh, it is illegal to mix pesticides with anything prohibited by the label, so don't do it. Label is the law from the last lecture. And if not prohibited, perform a jar test. And that concludes Chapter 5 again, guys. Hopefully you read the chapter prior to listening to the lecture. And again, take my advice. When you read the chapters, take a yellow highlighter, highlight your information you think is important, and then when you're watching these lectures, get a different color highlighter and, uh, and go over it. So use the lighter one first and then maybe use an orange uh, on top of it or green that's a little bit darker and highlight the stuff that I talk about. Guys, I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next lecture.